Okay, so let's continue with the urinary system. So what happens, what are the symptoms when our kidney is diseased, not at the ease or there is a disorder or the malfunction of the kidney. So what happens? So what are the symptoms? So you will notice pain around the back and the sides, fatigue, you get tired, anemia because kidney is not giving proper signals to produce the red blood cells, uh, you feel cold, um, shortness of breath because unpurified blood goes into the heart and lungs, uh, your brain fog, you feel dizziness, memory issues, possible. Uh, itching, why? Because the too much toxins or the waste products in the blood doesn't get purified. So it is reflected everywhere that leads to itching. Um, swelling because kidney takes uh, and strikes the balance of uh, water balance and the pH level and all that. So the fluid that remains in the body that leads to the swelling, um, puffiness in the face, um, too much toxin, sometimes you feel like food doesn't taste the way it normally does. Uh, bad breath because the unpurified blood is circulating in your body. Uh, nausea, of course, uh, changes in the urinary frequency. Sometimes you go but it doesn't work the way it should and sometimes you end up going more frequently. <clears throat> you may wake up more frequently throughout the night and you cannot sleep that may lead to the insomnia. So those are the symptoms that can happen and when kidney is not functioning properly of course you will notice change in the urine color okay or sometimes you will have a foamy or bubbly uh, appearance and the discoloration and sometimes it may even lead to uh, blood in the urine and of course the red brown other colors you may also notice depending upon uh, what is the ultimate diagnosis and the cause that leads to the kidney disease so let's talk about the congenital abnormalities and few things here to note Congenital abnormalities may include the absence of one kidney, the presence of an extra kidney or abnormally sapped kidney. So you could have a three variations. The absence of one kidney is rare but it does occur and the patient's solitary kidney usually will be normal. But the challenge is this. If something goes wrong with that only kidney that is otherwise normal, if something goes wrong with that normal kidney then it creates problems because you are having only one kidney so it can lead to many pathological conditions. The extra kidney, it may develop near, above, below uh, the normal kidney and you may it, it may develop near one or both kidneys, okay? And one of the unique feature about this congenital kidney is horseshoe kidney. So what happens, and I'll show you the slide soon, that you have a two kidneys, they are fused together such that at the midline, it gives the shape of a horseshoe and hence the name given is also kidney. Now this horseshoe kidneys may not produce any symptoms but may be subject to variety of diseases including uh, hydronephrosis or uh, pyelonephritis or kidney stones. So let's take a look at seeing is believing. So this one, a person has one functioning kidney or a person has only one kidney. 
see the normal kidney and the impaired kidney or the one where you have only one kidney as opposed to the typical two kidneys that generally we are born with. This is another slide where it portrays an example of having extra kidney. And I was saying before that you could have extra kidneys. Now this one, you have two normal kidneys, but right above the two normal kidneys, there are two additional kidneys. Okay. So what complexities it may bring, it depends. Horseshoe kidney. So you have a two normal kidney. Now you know the kidney, ureter, bladder and urethra. Horseshoe kidney is where those two kidneys create a shape of a horseshoe and that's why the name given is horseshoe kidney. Now horseshoe kidney in this example, in this slide is cause of kidney cancer. So is it possible? It may. It may not. So it depends. Another frequently encountered kidney disease is the cystic disease or the renal cystic disease. That's the condition that is characterized by the replacement of functioning kidney tissue with fluid-filled cyst. Okay, so you have a normal kidney and you have a kidney where there are cysts on top of or within the kidney. Now this cyst may be either solitary or multiple. It may affect just one kidney or maybe both kidneys. Okay. Polycystic kidney disease is an inherited condition that causes a slow deterioration of kidney function and often results in renal failure. So polycystic kidney disease when that you see, uh, you really need to look at the big profile and see what's going on for those of you who are the technical underwriters and reviewing the medical records based on what has been admitted on the application and of course you correlate with the blood, urine and other details that you have in the file. Another popular disease of the kidney is medullary sponge kidney. Remember the anatomy we previously reviewed? Medulla is the middle portion of the kidney. And as the name suggests, medullary sponge kidney, sponge, how it is? So what happens here, there is a dilation in the middle portion of the kidney. The, and that is connected through or because of cyst. So it is called cystic dilation of the collecting ducts in the renal medulla. And hence the name given is medullary sponge kidney. It rarely causes renal failure. But frequent complications are blood in the urine, recurrent infection, and the kidney formation. So the stone in the kidney, those are the uh, frequently observed complications um, in case if you are diagnosed with the medullary sponge kidney. Uh, prognosis, it depends, it is related to the development of the degree of the disease and the complications. So, this is just, you know, we haven't scraped the surface, this is just a very fundamental and the basic overview of some of these details, but you could have a no cyst, normal kidney, you could have a simple cyst, you could have a polycystic kidney disease, uh, there are some variations I did not dive deep into. Uh, as we have the field partners and customers who may not have the medical background, but uh, we did touch base about the medullary sponge kidney but it can have an impact on the kidney up to a point that you may lead to a dialysis and if it doesn't work and ultimately it may lead to the uh, kidney transplant. So that's all I have on this one, lot to cover, I'm going to break it down into the different segments to make it easier for you to follow the presentation series on the urinary system. See you soon, bye now.